Everywhere in the world we can observe and be touched by acts of kindness. People from all walks of life, faiths and cultures extend themselves beyond the call of duty to help others unconditionally. Through their noble deeds, humanity as a whole is elevated. To commend virtuous actions and encourage more people to be inspired by their examples, Supreme Master Cheng Hai has lovingly created a series of awards, including the Shining World Leadership Award, Shining World Compassion Award, Shining World Hero and Heroine Awards, Shining World Honesty Award, Shining World Protection Award, Shining World Intelligence Award, and Shining World Inventor Award. To recognize some of the most exemplary, generous, caring, and courageous people who walk amongst us. The sound of undulating waves engulfs one's senses in the rhythmic heartbeat of the majestic ocean. Within the water, the seals inhabit this ethereal marine realm. Graceful aquatic acrobats, these precious creations of God, are in perfect communion with the divine in their oceanic world. They are full of emotions, they respond to you, they, they answer your calls, Although they are wild seals, they, they behave as intimately as any animal that you've ever encountered would. How could anyone have the heart to harm these noble beings? This is a question that Mr. Francois Hugo asks himself every day as he saves the lives of numerous seals in his native South Africa as well as in Namibia. These animals function exactly like us humans. They think for themselves, they think what is right, they think what is wrong for them, and when they see other people around them helping them, they understand, and you have to believe in that. For five million years, the Cape Fur Seals, or South African Seals, have lived in their natural habitat on islands off the coast of the African continent. However, within the last 600 years, humans have drastically reduced the population of these seals and endangered the species' continued existence. Seal alert represents seals in the Cape Fur seal species. It's the only species of seal breeding on the African continent. Um, it's been subjected to many, many centuries of abuse, and my job is to reverse that abuse and to get them back on the evolutionary path uh, and in so doing protect them and save them for the future. Founded in 1999 by Francois Hugo, Seal Alert South Africa is a pioneering seal rescue organization that takes a hands-on approach to addressing the cruelty to and abuse of seals through advocacy, campaigns and introduction of legislation. Seal Alert also investigates the injustices done to seals as well as rescues and rehabilitates the animals, successfully transitioning them back to the wild. Seal Alert's mission has been for the last 10 years to do everything in its power to protect the species and to ensure that it survives into the future. Therefore I investigate all aspects that affect seals um, and I undertake all activities to try and protect and save them, which is addressing sealing, overfishing, debris in the water, the rescue of seals, um, how to understand the species, what basically they need to survive. The organization is a reflection of Mr. Hugo's dedication and heartfelt devotion towards the seals. Basically, I've lived amongst wild colonies of seals for the last 10 years. Um, as many people would, would come home to their family, uh, seals are my family. Um, and I have uh, probably raised 5,000 of them. I live and breathe them, I think about them, I sleep about them. They are as much part of my life as the air that I breathe. Mr. Hugo's commitment to the welfare of the seals is truly laudable. Where did this passion for these marine mammals originate? I've been in the water my entire life. I've actually spent more time underwater than on land. And um, 
I saw seals that's just fish in the water, an, an animal that didn't need help. Um, and one seal then caught my attention, it was dying and it was entangled. Um, and that little uh, seal I named Sweetie. And that seal basically awakened my whole eyesight to their problem. Um, and from that minute onwards, I've never left seals in the next 10 years. Um, it's been a, a continuous, as soon as he was rehabilitated, the next seal arrived, and so the next seal came on. Cape fur seals are unique in that they need both the sea as well as land to survive. Over time, they began to inhabit offshore islands where they have found relative safety in order to thrive as a species. Those islands have become, um, we call them colonies or rookeries, but those are basically seals' homes. Um, and it's a whole 12-month process, almost like humans live in a house. Seals will come to that colony and leave from the colony, but they always come back to rest, to molt, to, to breed, to mate, and to feed their young. So um, it's, it's very important, these communities that seals have, um, and they've evolved in very special ways where the bulls take care of the whole family as such. Uh, the females are then moved into harems in groups of between one and sixty uh, cows to a bull. Uh, the pups are all born together, so the pups grow up as siblings on the colony, um, and they all interact with each other. And it's a continual hive of activity where each is actually looking after its own, but at the same time, each seal becomes an individual. After these brief messages, we'll continue with today's program featuring the benevolent Francois Hugo, founder of Seal Alert South Africa. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. That bull you see sitting up there in the middle was my first baby rescued eight years ago. The one that I've managed to be successful with. He was raised in my house and he watched television. And um, he has adopted this raft and everything that's on it as his colony. He's the alpha male on that colony now. He's actually the first Cape Fur Seal baby ever hand raised in the history of South Africa. Thank you for joining us for today's program on the Shining World Compassion Laureate Francois Hugo, the founder of Seal Alert South Africa. 365 days of the year, Mr. Hugo is on call and at all hours. Annually, he rescues approximately a thousand Cape Fur seals. His devotion stems from his awareness that each animal is a living, breathing, sentient being that deserves the right to live. From the very first seal, 10 years ago, I've never left the seals for that one day. Never had a day off, never had a night off, never gone away. If I have to leave the Prime Minister from over here, I come here at 4 o'clock in the morning, feed them, get on the plane at 6, and be back here that evening. Whether you're in a meeting or discussion and life is at stake, you drop everything, that becomes important. The seals' lives are in grave danger due to human activities, which infringe upon their natural way of life. They have been driven away from the large islands they have called home for centuries. The seals in turn are living on basically washed rocks. In context, 98% of the original habitat is completely banned and extinct to them. Um, the 2% the that they're living on is divided over a total uh, uh, coastline area of over 2,000 kilometers. So, uh, for example, each seal colony is now living on less than one hectare of a rock off the coastline of South Africa. Um, and what is upsetting to a species like that is that they are living on a rock that gets completely awash where every six hours they are being submerged in, or every 12 hours with the high tides they are being submerged, they're wet, they're, they're, they're being forced to remain cold. This goes on throughout the year and less than a few meters or kilometers away there's the perfect habitat that was used to be their homeland is banned to them. Seal populations have also been decimated by Namibia's sealing industry. The commercial fishing industry is a threat to the lives of seal pups as well. In the case of Cape Fur seals, by causing them to flee north, they've moved 2,000 kilometers north of their range. They're now in double their temperature ranges. 
in water and on land. Since 94, we've had several major mass die-offs where all the pups have starved to death. These are all the imbalances that man's creating for the species. Man has subjected them to living on these washed rocks. Uh, the babies are struggling to, to, to try and survive. Most will wash off and drown. Uh, they're not being clubbed up in Namibia, which they club every little seal that's left. Uh, then they're getting shot by the fishing industry. So for a seal in our waters, life is very hard. Despite their aquatic skills as adults, seal pups are relatively helpless in their first year of life. Their struggle for survival is a heart-wrenching tale. The mothers have to raise their babies knowing their babies are going to drown uh, when the perfect island lies literally meters away from them. Um, this is the kind of absurdity that mankind has created in the natural world and the environment off our coastline. Facing all these hazards, many seals get washed ashore, injured and barely alive. With fate on their side, they will be rescued and nursed back to health by the loving Mr. Hugo. The successful rehabilitation takes place after 12 months. As if there's a bond between pup and myself, a mother and, and pup bond. Um, that is the only way it works. And then that bond stays with you for the rest of your life. Um, wherever you see each other, you are inseparable. You are bonded for life after that. I've had seals that you rescue in a particular month in the year, and they were obviously involved in their migration uh, path, either going north or south, uh, traveling many, many kilometers away. and because each year they'll be back on that same migratory path, then they will stop in at my facilities, and then they greet you and they spend a week or two with you, and then they're off they go back in the annual cycle. The thousands of successful seal rescues are a testimony to Mr. Hugo's long hours of hard work and especially devoted love. Every seal you form unique and amazing bonds with, um, but particularly with the babies, um, because you become their adopted parent, um, they, they become your family and your children. Um, and um, we've had, for example, my very first one, which was raised in my house, I never had facilities. Um, I mean, he used to watch television with me. When I had to type reports, he'd be sitting on my lap typing reports. So he was almost uh, a pet seal. To have such an inner connection with these noble animal co-inhabitants is undoubtedly a privilege and unforgettable experience. A learning of Mr. Hugo's concern and benevolent heart for the seals, Supreme Master Cheng Hai made a 200,000 US dollar contribution to further his seal protection work and later honored him with the Shining World Compassion Award. Please join us next Thursday for the second episode of this two-part Shining World Compassion Award series, featuring the presentation of the award to Mr. Hugo and more about Seal Alert South Africa's valiant efforts. For more details on Seal Alert South Africa, please visit sealalertsa.wordpress.com or contact Francois Hugo at sacline at wam.co.za or plus two seven two one seven nine zero eight seven seven four. Thank you loving viewers for your company today on Animal World Our Co-Inhabitants. May the universal power of love permeate your life. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.